Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Vendo Velocity. Lucky for me today, I have a very special guest with me, and we will be talking all about a 360 degree omni channel launch strategy. So, Tati, it's a pleasure to have you on Vendo Velocity. If you can go ahead and introduce yourself and your role within the Vendo team, that would be fantastic. Yeah, super excited to be here and super excited to be with the best host, of course. Uh, but my name is Tatiana. So I've been with Vendo for over one and a half years. Uh, and I've been working on the walmart.com and then samsclub.com side of the business. So I'm an account manager. So I'm the main point of contact for, it, for the brand's day to day business for anything walmart.com. And then I also work with our many other great teams um, to implement a full, like, strategy for the brand awesome and uh i had the pleasure of working with tati as an intern and i think it was very clear that when she was an intern that um her her future just within the e-commerce landscape was going to accelerate very quickly so that's indeed what she has done and now she's one of our strongest account managers managing a very large book of business on the walmart.com side as she had said so tati let's go ahead and dive on into it we'll try to build some parallels here between walmart and amazon since we know how interrelated they really are um the first thing though overall e-commerce launch requirements walmart is a little bit more specific than amazon in which you have more front-facing communication with a merchant so talk a little bit about that merchant relationship and some of the requirements that they are imposing upon different sellers um, in terms of launch requirements um, when we're looking at content scores, rating and, ratings and reviews, et cetera. Yeah, so first off, I do wanna say that merchants, the more that I meet with them over time, the more that they start talking about .com and omni-channel. So it's becoming increasingly more important for Walmart um, because they want to really fully implement that full omni-channel strategy. Uh, so the first thing that they look for is content quality score. And basically that is like Walmart's version of scoring your item based on how it will sell on relevant um, search terms and how it will convert. So it merchants, or merchants require 90% minimum. Um, and we usually optimize for 95% plus, but some merchants even require 95% minimums too. But there's a million different things that go into content quality score. It, it looks at your images, your image count, um, if you're following the style guides. Uh, so basically, how well is your copy? Is there, is there um, keywords tagged into it that's relevant to your category? And then things like attribution. And then attribution is just back end tagging to make sure that your product will show on relevant search terms. And then when ever shoppers tend to like filter and stuff, your product will still show up. So it's a mixture of a bunch of different things, but merchants are really, really stressing the importance of 90% minimum. And then a lot of times other merchants also recommend 95% minimum. So that's what we shoot for and that's our goal. Uh, but in terms of ratings and reviews, they require 4.2 plus and 50 plus reviews minimum. And they do this because um, we have seen a 30% sales lift and having 50 positive reviews versus zero reviews on walmart.com across the board. So they understand it's very important for conversion and for sales. So they also require that. Um, and then there's a few different ways that you can get those reviews, especially with a new item that's launching at Walmart and it's completely new to the ecosystem. You can do a sampling campaign or review syndication, uh, and then you'll have to go through different partners for that. So you'll have to go through either a partner like Bizarre Voice, Power Reviews, or Home Tester Club uh, for things like that. And we have a bunch of different partners that we work with, so we're very familiar with like the entire suite of partners that we can work with in their different campaigns. And then, but, Tati, how long do we would would we typically expect some of those review campaigns to take place, and when do you recommend brands really kick them off? Yeah, so some so, so I'm gonna start off by saying merchants like like everything like tied up like four weeks prior to launch. So that means all the reviews, all the content scores, all your images are good four weeks prior, and then on top of that, sampling campaigns can take upwards of 
five to six weeks. Um, so factoring all that into your timeline, you want to make sure that you have the sample sent out about 10 weeks before you're about to launch, at least. Got it. And then as we know, on the Amazon side of the business, it's more difficult to get some of those reviews expedited, mainly because they do have the Vine program in which you can send those in and get 30 reviews per individual child ASIN. But there is not the ability to be syndicating different reviews from your website. So Walmart does have a little bit of the upper hand there in terms of getting reviews quicker. Um, obviously, different opinions on that, on where the reviews are from, this and that. But that is very important as well to take into account because when you're looking at the Amazon business as a whole, the review strategy is just as important as Tati had shared with those 50 reviews, a 30% conversion rate um, lift is massive. So very important to get those right off the bat. But Tati, let's go back a little to your content quality score um, comment there. The merchants pushing this so heavily, are there also implications on that content quality score on your assortment in stores if you do exist there? There definitely is. Uh, if you don't have good content online, merchants will threaten to pull your items off the shelves, especially if it's already like performing okay in stores um, because content is so important to them. Um, it's important for their pickup, uh, their ship from store. It's, it's important to them. It's becoming increasingly more important with the way that they're building out things for omni-channel. So yes, it will affect you if you don't meet those guidelines. They will pressure you and they will tell you that you need to handle this or your items at risk for deletion from stores. Absolutely. So even if you are a current Walmart, doc, Walmart store seller and you're not prioritizing your Walmart.com business, one, you're leaving a lot of money on the table and you're just leaving a lot of opportunity on the table by not selling on Walmart.com. But in addition to that, it is affecting your overall store business as well and the future of it. So definitely focus on that content quality score. And then let's talk a little bit about rich content. Um, Tati, because as we know on Amazon, they've had A plus content for a while now. Um, they had just more recently launched premium A plus content on a wider scale for a lot of sellers. And then a couple years ago now, probably they had released brand stories. Um, and we know what's coming for walmart.com in relation to um, the brand store version, as Amazon would call it. But talk a little bit about that rich content and why it's important to have it at launch. Yeah, so Walmart just brought back below the fold content. Um, so that would be anything below the fold. And it's very similar to Amazon's below the fold content where it's like images, infographics, information about the brand, information about the product. So they just brought that back and we're able to see some really cool metrics on it, such as like impressions with their different like content partners. Um, but as far as like at launch and like what type of, like rich content you should have for sure. Uh, merchants definitely like recommend a uh, video at launch. So for example, if it's like a product that's not always like even popular with like the general Walmart shopper, uh, for example, like, I don't know, like a plant-based snack um, or something like that. Um, and it's being just being marketed as a normal snack. It could help for you to have like that video that like, highlights the key selling points of the item, uh, the ingredient claims, or even if it's something more complex, like workout equipment, you want to see how it works and you want to see all the key selling points of the item. So it's, it's very important to also have rich content at launch. Um, I think that that really like hammers the nail further in terms of like conversion rates. Uh, but yeah, I think that it's definitely merchants recommend it. Um, and they don't require it at this time, but they are always pushing for it. Yep, absolutely. And then let's circle back to something else that you had mentioned, which was the style guides. I know at Vendo, we have a very in-depth content audit process to reach those 95% content scores. And unlike Amazon, and Amazon has rolled out the listing quality da dashboard, which if you have a SaaS rep or a Launchpad rep, you'll know that they're pushing more heavily to be adding some of these backend attributes. Um, but Amazon is a bit more algorithmic driven than focused on pushing this style guide at this time. 
Um, so Tati, let's talk about those content audits when it comes to images, when it comes to copy, what are some of the best practices there and why do we really implement those best practices? Yeah. So, uh, in terms of like style guides, like what they are basically, uh, for each like product type. So if you had like a diet food, um, it would have, there'd be a style guide specifically for diet, diet food. And it gives you like optimizations to work towards, um, and, and examples even to work towards for anything from copy, uh, images, the type of images you should be showing, um, and then also like attributes, what attributes should, should be tagged and like examples and explanations of them. But basically how this relates to content quality score is we don't exactly know how content quality score is ranked. We just know that by meeting all of the requirements and the recommendations best we can in the style guide can get us to that 100% content quality score. So that's kind of how we use them. Uh, and it, it, like you said, we go through like a full content audit process. Um, and then our team is like very good at like implementing that and getting those optimizations up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how they're used uh, and how and we implement them. Of the back end attributes, I know you've spoken on that a few times on how you want to make sure that you're filling out a lot of those relevant back end attributes. How do you assess for your brand what those would be? Yeah, so for example, um, recently I did attribution on like an animal cookie. So it's it was kind of like a, an animal cracker, but it was a diff specific type of animal. And it said like a uh, brand and then it said animal cookie. And they were really wanting to rank on the animal crackers keywords because it, it basically it is an animal cracker. Um, it didn't have anywhere in the packaging, didn't have it anywhere originally in the copy or the title or the attributes. So what we did is we took that because they wanted to be ranked on animal, animal cracker. Uh, we take that and we added like animal cracker a little bit in the keywords. And then in the attribution, there were specific tags specific to like, it's a cookie, but is it an animal cracker? And then we tagged it with animal cracker. Um, and then there's also specific tags, like, is it gluten free? Um, what dietary restrictions could someone have and still eat this? So when shoppers shop that way, it's very important to have that there, uh, which is why Walmart scores it uh, scores it as part of your content quality score. So like if, for, for example, you didn't have that filled out and the shopper was trying to find things that way, it, your item just wouldn't show up. Exactly. And then that's not only going to have an implication on your organic search results, but also your ability to advertise um, on those keywords via the paid channel. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing for organic search, because that's one of the biggest pain points, I'd say, that a lot of Walmart.com sellers don't necessarily get right because they don't understand some of these strategies around shelving paths yeah. and product types, etc. So let's talk a little bit about that too, Tati. Yeah, so... That same is an example, um, like I said, we weren't ranking on any animal cracker keywords and we couldn't figure out why. Um, so we looked at the content quality score. It was great. Uh, product attribution, it was good, but then we needed to fill it out more specific to animal cracker. And then we looked at a few other things. So we looked at the product type. Um, it was correct. It was under animal cracker, but product type is something that, for example, if it was under just like cookie, uh, it might not show up under that as well. And product type is something you can update with your merchant uh, and it has to go through them. And then also like the breadcrumbs and the shelving path that you suggested. So we also made shelving path updates on that to sit on the animal crackers, um, animal crackers shelving path. And that all that in turn, like increased us from having absolutely no rank on the animal crackers to being ranked number six organically on like very top keywords. Awesome. And then let's talk about other ways in which you can improve your organic search over time. One of them that is very unique to Walmart is pinning and boosting. Talk a little bit about how often you're now seeing merchants pin and boost items on the top of certain pages. Has this decreased over time? Um, and really, what is the strategy behind doing that? Which items would you focus on to do that, etc.? Yeah, so I think in general, it might have decreased over time um, with the merchants like actually pinning and boosting them. 
Um, but the strategy that you would like look at into that, um, first of all, whenever you go to the merchant, you also want to layer in there that you are running some sort of advertising to this, or they're not going to want to invest in it if you're not investing in it in yourself. Uh, but usually pinning is like, they will pin it to the first spot, uh, the first organic placement uh, for a certain period of time so that it could naturally get some organic rank on that shelf or on that search query uh, that it's being pinned on. So we can look at different items that maybe are like a new launch um, that maybe don't have as much traffic to it yet. Uh, when your whole full other line is like fully implemented. Uh, maybe like, for example, if you're launching a whole new line in stores um, and there's a few items online that are online only and you want that overall like brand awareness, um, you can have some of those online items pinned there too. Awesome. That's great to know. And then let's transition a little bit onto um, omni-channel marketing, because I think that's a large part of the Walmart ecosystem that if you're just an Amazon seller, you might not have dabbled in as much because of maybe your lack of store presence, et cetera. So talk a little bit about some of those best practices when it comes to on-site marketing with Walmart. Yeah. So on-site, we and the merchants recommend Search, having search on at launch. So like having sponsored products on at launch, whenever you search like a, a popular search query for your item, you should be showing up sponsored on there. Um, so that's looking at like sponsored products, which would be like the search and grid sponsored, uh, sponsored brands, which would be like the branded, um, like the branded banner at the top of search queries. Uh, and then sponsored video and sponsored video is something completely new to Walmart um, that we're seeing. It's currently beta testing. So we're pretty excited to participate it, in it for some of our brands. Uh, but that's also via search. So if you search a, pop, a popular keyword, it's going to block out a whole row of just a sponsored video. And you're going to do this by targeting a mixture of both category and branded keywords. So you don't just want to target branded keywords. Otherwise, you're going to be inflating your ROAS. Um, and customers are probably already buying your products if they're searching for your brand. Um, and then you want to be a top player in the category. So that's why I say you want to, you want to partially protect your brand, uh, protect the keywords, um, but then also bid on category keywords. Awesome. And then the second portion of that, which is, of course, Walmart Connect um, and all the intricacies there, what would you say for a new brand selling on walmart.com that isn't familiar with Walmart Connect, otherwise known as WMC? Is this a good opportunity to invest further in Walmart by partnering with Walmart Connect? What should sellers be aware of when partnering with Walmart Connect? Um, and really, what are your recommendations overall for running a campaign directly through Walmart Connect? Yeah, so we like to say to our brands, like crawl, walk, run. So very, very, very front at the crawl, launching sponsored products. Um, based on our budget and our performance there, we can definitely upscale. We do a lot of Walmart Connect managed campaigns for our brands. Um, when we looked at we look at like holiday promotions, like display campaigns, like layered in there. So like back to school for like snacks or like food and drink. Um, or even just like home items. So yes, we recommend Walmart, Walmart Connect managed campaigns, but we recommend like really, really hammering down your strategy and your performance first on just the very basics. Otherwise you're going to spend all this money and then it might, you might not get the return you wanted because you didn't hammer down the basics first. Uh, but something I missed on the previous one uh, on search, like why you have to launch search at launch, it's because organic rank is naturally very, very poor for new products. So you kind of have to help it out at launch with search um, because organic rank is like a mixture of relevancy and like conversion on certain keywords that you search. So I wanted to circle back on that. 
Awesome. And then, yes, yeah. if you're not seeing that your ads are serving as well, then that's a good cue for you to go back, check your product type, check your shelving yep. path, all of those attributes that Tati was previously speaking about, because of course, it's going to take time for you to start to rank organically. But if you you're, you are pushing those ads and you're still not seeing them deliver, there's probably a back end issue that you need to prioritize fixing before you continue to pour money into these ads. Perfect, Tati. Yes, thanks for circling back to that. That's a really good point there. And then in terms of external marketing tactics, we know at Amazon how much external traffic is valued. We know about the Amazon attribution program and the brand referral bonus where you can really get 10% of your sales back to you through the brand referral bonus. Um, and Amazon just really values driving external traffic um, back to Amazon. So Tati, obviously Walmart has started to take some strides in that regard, but there's a lot of different things that you can do maybe outside of just attribution, which of course we know they're starting to dabble with a little bit with programs like Luminate. Um, but talk a little bit about some of those external marketing tactics as well and what you would recommend as some of the best strategies for brands to employ. Yeah, so we touched based on like the marketing for the reviews a little bit. But there's a lot of customer loyalty programs that you can leverage um, on Walmart because Walmart doesn't really have any coupons on their site. So we recommend like looking at like companies like GoFetch Rewards, Ibotta, uh, and looking at like redemption partners for like coupons. We see a lot of success in things like that and building brand loyalty and getting like new to brand shoppers. Um, and then also like just in general, like offsite advertising, like Google, Meta. Um, you know, you know, the, <laughs> you know that, um, but, and then also something that I have seen work on brands that have a huge like com presence and either whether it be like social or just like a whole community, uh, they have done social posts and it's layered in with their D to C and on their D to C, they have Walmart store locators where you can find their products at Walmart. And I've also seen where they've also done um, where they've also done like email marketing campaigns that said find a Walmart near you or like look at our find our products at a retailer near you and then for our Walmart products they show up on there. So even if it's like not directly directly to Walmart, it's still pushing a lot of traffic, especially for those like e-commerce native brands that are up and coming and then are really, really good at doing those type of things. Uh, yeah, that's a great point, especially with what Walmart continues to tell us just as far as their reach, what is it? 90% of the country lives like a mile or 10 minutes from a Walmart. Isn't that the stat? So yeah, <laughs> those store locators, obviously a great way to continue to push additional traffic and just make it even easier for the consumer to see where they can purchase um, some of your products within the stores as well. But then, uh, Tati, let's talk a little bit about some of the upcoming events as we wrap, out, wrap up this podcast here. We think about holiday, which is one of Walmart's biggest times of the year. But first, we know that Amazon this year is having not just a Prime Day, which was just announced this week as July 11th and 12th, but they will also be having Prime Early Access Sale, which was the fall Prime Day for last year. They did end up confirming that that will be coming back. Um, projecting sometime around September or October after this Prime Day, of course, but right before the holiday. What do you think, Tati, from a Walmart.com standpoint, what are some of the best strategies as brands work towards gearing up for some of these promotional periods? Because as we know, these are going to be some of their largest sales periods um, on Walmart and Amazon. Yeah, so interestingly enough, uh, Walmart Plus Days were just announced July 16th or 13th there uh, on their socials. Uh, so again, Walmart sort of looking at Amazon strategy, trying to deter some of their shoppers away from Amazon and onto their platform so they can be more competitive. But in terms of what like what brands can do uh, for like on-site marketing or external marketing, so we touched a little bit on the external marketing. Even things like a heavy up on their search during a certain week that Amazon is also running, um, also running Amazon Prime week. We could look at that too. That's something that we see for a lot of brands. 
for example, for like Cinco de Mayo, if we couldn't participate in a Walmart Connect to Manage campaign, we would lift our search budget up for a certain amount of weeks upcoming to that. So that's just something very like low level we can do. And then obviously there's a million things we can do high level. Um, we can do like a bunch of external marketing tactics um, and also like working with the merchants on you know, Walmart Connect team on upcoming promotions, different strategies on those. And then even with Walmart's new homepage, uh, they have like more and more opportunities to have site merch placements. And we're just kind of seeing them pop up a little bit. So definitely more and more events are being like promoted on the homepage. So there's more placement on homepage. Uh, there's more opportunities for you to like lift your search budget during those times. Uh, but yeah, I hope I answered your question. No, definitely. That was perfect. And then Walmart plus days, is that what you said it's called? I feel like they changed the name a little bit every year. Yeah. Wasn't it like deals for days in the past? Like there's always been a different name there, but now that Walmart plus, which is of course the competitive subscription service to Amazon prime is a lot more established. I'm sure that Walmart plus days is probably going to be here to stay. How many days did you say that was going for Tati? Did they confirm that? July 6th through 13th is what oh, they wow. confirm okay. via yep. their socials. Got so it. I need to look at it again. I'm not sure if it's just Walmart Plus members first and then the full rollout. But even if it's not like an official full rollout to all Walmart shoppers, brands are still going to be running a ton of promotions on site. Yep, absolutely. And again, that coincides directly with uh, the Prime Day period, which is July <laughs> yes. 11th as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if... Tati and I have another one of these coming up soon because of the fall prime day, because while Walmart, Walmart hasn't announced any competitive event, you bet that there will be one for then no. as well. <laughs> but awesome, Tati, I think you gave us so much information today on just overall what it takes to have the most opportune omni-channel launch strategy, as well as how we can optimize organic search, but also to beef up our organic search with some of these on-site marketing and external marketing tactics. So thank you so much for joining us today. Tati, if you could leave our viewers with one piece of advice on selling on walmart.com, what would you say it would be? <laughs> uh, use Vendo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shameless plug. There we go. All right. Great to see you, everyone, and we will see you on Vendo Velocity next week. Have a great weekend. Bye, everyone.